Hey guys, this is lesson three of unit two for geometry. We are going to be talking about conditional statements. We're continuing our discussion of logic and reasoning. In our last lesson, we talked about what a statement is. Uh, this time, we're going to basically be looking at if-then statements. So that's what a conditional statement is. So it is an if-then statement. Need So it's an if then statement. A conditional statement has two parts. It has the beginning part, the if part essentially is the hypothesis, which is not quite the same as the hypothesis in uh, science class. It's not quite the, it doesn't have quite the same meaning or connotation, but it, it kind of is sort of similar in math in geometry in particular it is like the the beginning so it's the if part and then the then part the result is called the conclusion that one definitely makes a lot of sense right conclusion okay so let's look at a couple of examples and we're going to identify the hypothesis and the conclusion. So for each one of these two statements, we're going to identify what the hypothesis is and the conclusion is. So for the first one, if the forest is rain, then I will take an umbrella. So this one is pretty straightforward and pretty easy. So the hypothesis is the forest is rain. <laughs> If the, oh, I can read. You, uh, you can't say I can't read. If the forecast is rain, I don't know why I'm reading forest. I don't know. Run, forest, run. <laughs> if the forecast is rain. So the hypothesis would be the forecast is rain. Because I can. This would be the hypothesis. Now, then I will make an umbrella. So I will make an umbrella is the conclusion. Let's let's use two different colors. We'll try to have some amount of consistency if I remember. No, no promises. All bets may be a little bit off. So the conclusion of this statement is I will take an umbrella, right? Now, this one's easy, right? Because this literally has the words if and then. It's written in if-then form. We're going to kind of that's going to be the next, next set of examples is rewriting things in this format. But we might have a statement that's not written that way. So a number, so the second one is a number is divisible by 10 if its last digit is a zero. So in this case, we're a little bit, is a little bit different. We kind of have to rewrite some things. So the hypothesis for this first one or for the second statement would be, um, a numbers, a numbers last digit is a zero. That's the hypothesis for this statement, right? So it's, even though it's at the end, it's still the hypothesis part. So then the conclusion part of this conditional statement is conclusion. The number, oh, the number is divisible by 10. So that is that statement. I'm going to pause this video for right back. I'll be right back. You won't even notice any time. So as promised a couple of seconds ago, the, well, minutes probably. <laughs> seconds, minutes, same thing. Not really, but we'll roll with it. It's all time. Time is relative, which is true. <laughs> we're going to write these statements, which are not currently in if-then form, and we're going to, we're going to write them in if-then form. So for the first one, a mammal is a warm-blooded animal. Okay, so... Let's, right there, a lot of times there are more than one way to do these. Um, we're going to, we're going to, so at least slightly, you could word them slightly different and still get it correct. So if
an animal. Is a mammal oh. mammal then it is warm blooded, right? Is I should have spread these out a little bit more, but I think that's still mostly visible. Warm blooded. Okay. There we go. There's the first one turned into if then form. The second one, a prism with bases that are regular polygons is a regular polygon. So we need to turn this into if then form. So if, haha. A prism has bases which are, you could say that are, I don't know, I, that one bugs me in math books. What's, what is, so for those of you who are super savvy grammars, grammars, <laughs> What is the correct word there? Is it that or which? I don't know. It's it that one's always bugged me because it's felt like which would be correct, but most math textbooks use that. So you'll let me know in the comments. If a prism has bases which are regular polygons, polygons. I'm gonna abbreviate that one. Then, if then, then it is a regular prism. I'm going to abbreviate both of those. Except I should draw a G instead of a Q. What do y'all think? A regular prism. Okay. So now that we've kind of learned what a conditional statement is and how to turn it into an if then form, let's look at the truth value and when it's true. Cause, and it, it creates some interesting moments actually, because well, you'll see. So pop that off and that off. So let's do a truth table for an if then statement. So when we do, so an, a conditional statement is made up of two different statements. And what we, and so we write that if P, then Q. Right? So we, we say this, this out loud, if P, and you remember from our logic video that P is a statement, then Q. Right? So that's what's that's how we write a conditional statement with kind of more generic. And you'll remember that each one of these, P and Q, is a statement unto its unto itself. Right? So if we're gonna write a truth table for a conditional, then it's gonna look like this. And it, it might part of this may surprise you. I'll kind of do my best to explain why for those why askers. And hopefully many of you are why askers, especially in a geometry class because that would be a very relevant question a lot of the time, right? So we've got two statements. We've got the P statement, which is the, I should label that, right? What color was our hypothesis? So I keep my consistency. I think that was the pink one, yeah. So the P is the hypothesis statement, and the Q is the conclusion statement, right? So hypothesis, conclusion. And then we're going to write the truth value for if P, then Q, right? So our possibilities, of course, are the hypothesis could be a true statement and the conclusion would be a true statement. So if this is true, then this is true. This would be true. So if we say, 
if we start out if we start out with a true hypothesis and then give a true conclusion, then it end result is going to be true. We're going to see some examples of these here in a minute. So if the hypothesis hypothesis is true and the conclusion is true, then the conditional is a true statement overall. Now, if the hypothesis is true, but the condition is false, then this turns out to be a false statement in the end. So if we start out with something that is true, and we're going to see some examples. Uh, we're going to see, it, I think we see an example like this. I don't know. We'll see it when we look at our examples. So if we start out with something that's true, and then we say something that's false in the end, then the conditional as a whole is false. Now, the next one, if we start out with a false hypothesis, but a true condition, then it comes out true. And I'm going to put this last one down before I kind of do any, say any words about it. The last one is if we start out with a false hypothesis and we come at, and we end up with a true conclusion, no, a false condition, uh, conclusion, not condition, then the whole statement is still true. And it turns out, and I'll, I'll see if I explain this better here at, and whatever. You may be scratching your head thinking, that that's what? So anytime we start out with a, a, a false hypothesis, then we can say whatever we want after that, and it can be true. You might think about this, and the way the way I like to help, help students wrap their brain around this is you might think of a fantasy story. If we start out with the false hypothesis that fey magic is real and that fairy stories fairy stories exist and whatever else, then we can say whatever we want after that. So if fey magic is real, then Mr. McGregor turned the sky pink can be an absolutely true statement. So if we start off with a false hypothesis at the beginning, then we can say whatever we want after that. This is... I also like to point out here, and this is we're not going to go way deep down this rabbit hole oh, because this is this is not a philosophy class. It's a essentially a logic class, right? But it is it's not a philosophy class. So we're not going to go deep down this rabbit hole. But I do like to mention that this premise and this idea right here is why if you start with differing beginnings, different core ideas, different beliefs about what is true in the world, then it's very, very hard to have a productive dialogue or argument or whatever else in the end. Because if you start off with two different definitions of what truth is, it's hard to have any meaningful context. Because that other person, no matter what they say, it's 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 true, right? And whatever it's and and all these things. So this this idea. Let's look at a couple of examples of deciding whether a conditional is true or false. So let me pause for a second. I've got somebody in office hours and I'm back, but you didn't notice I was gone. So here we are. <laughs> we are going to determine the truth value of the following. There's kind of three different types of examples, right? And and uh, they're kind of three different ways of looking. Well, let's dive into them and you will see. So we're going to determine the truth value of the following conditional statements. So the first one is if you divide an integer by another integer, the result is also an integer. Okay. This one, this particular first one is, you know, if we were to write this uh, as an if then, you could say if the result of a division is an integer, then an integer was the original, or the you would probably use uh, probably formal language, then the dividend and divisor were also integers, probably. Something along those lines would be converting this to an if-then statement. But this one, in order to prove its truth value, it's kind of easier, and this is why I'm, all, every one of these we're kind of going to prove or disprove through a different method. Um, and this first one, it's easier to disprove because it's actually a false statement to let the cat out of the bag. It's easier to disprove by the use of a counter example. Counter example. I think that's a hyphenated word. It might be all one word. I don't know. 
Example. Ample. Maybe both right. You know, sometimes that's true. In the in the book, in the book we're using in my class right now, it's all one word. Might also be correct to hyphenate it. I don't know. So if you can have an example that this, that proves it false because it shows it to be false, a counter example, a, a false example, then it will dis, then it disproves the whole statement. So in this case, you could have a counter example of something like one divided by two because that equals 0 0.5, which is not an integer, right? And so this whole statement is false because of a counter example. False. So this would be kind of in our truth table, this would kind of be like where you start with a true hypothesis and end up with a false, well, that's really the only way you can get a false condition, right? The other ones were all true. Uh, yeah, they were all true. Yeah. So this one would be that one, right? So this is a false statement. Now the next one, if the month is July, then this, excuse me, if next month is August, then this month is July, right? So that's, there's our whole conditional. So is it true or false and whatever else? So if you were to write this, actually this one was already written as an if then, right? If the next month is August. So if the next month is August, that's true. It's not literally true at this moment in time. But if we have next month, August, then this month is July. So we have a true leading into a true statement. So this one is in fact true. There is no counterexample to this one that would prove it false. If you start out with a, and if you start out with a true hypothesis, then that's where you need to figure out uh, counterexamples. If you try it out with a true hypothesis, then you need to find a counterexample. You, you wouldn't find, and it's important to think, and this is, this is comparing the two, you can't find a counter example to if this month is August, because that's either true or false, right? Whatever else, right? I, I don't know. That's a little bit confusing, but there you go. Now, this last one is, is the most fun, I think, because it's kind of that fantasy land I was talking about, which kind of gives away the result, of course. But this one, if a triangle has four sides, then it is concave. We started out in this case with a false hypothesis because a triangle has three sides, not four, right? And so since we started out with if a triangle has four sides, so if we're in some alternate universe where a triangle has four sides and that's the way that word is defined, then we can say whatever we want. We can say it's concave, we can say it's convex, we could say it has 90 degree angles, we could say whatever the heck we wanted to say after that, and it would be true. So this one is an example of starting out with a false hypothesis, and then it doesn't matter. We could say whatever we want after this. If a triangle has four sky four if a triangle has four skies <laughs> skies. If a triangle has four sides, then mountains are all volcanoes. I mean, we can say whatever we want after that. And it's and the, and we end up with a true statement because we started out with a false hypothesis. That's it for conditional statements. In our next lesson, we're going to look at deductive reasoning. We've already talked about inductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is what we're going to use mostly for the rest of this class and we're going to later talk about some specific proofs and examples and all those things we will see you in the next one if you're one of my students do your homework see you in class all the things if you're not thanks for joining us don't forget to like comment and subscribe